The isolated northwest tip of Tasmania has some of the cleanest air in the world. Largely unaffected by local pollution, Kennaook Cape Grim is the perfect place for monitoring changes in the atmosphere. So a lot of the time it's getting really clean air coming off the Southern Ocean that's about as well mixed and free of human and terrestrial influence as any air masses on the planet. On the other side of the world, in Boulder, Colorado, the clean air collected from Tasmania feeds into a global monitoring program. Here are the instruments we use to measure the CO2 and methane. So these measurements provide the most fundamental records showing how the global greenhouse gas level changes in the past you know, three, uh, four or five decades. Methane is one of the gases being monitored. The primary ingredient in natural gas, it's the second biggest contributor to human-caused global warming. Methane concentrations in the atmosphere have been rising for hundreds of years. For unknown reasons, that growth slowed down around the start of this millennium. But about 15 years ago, researchers observed an uptick. And in the past few years, that increase has rapidly accelerated and broken records. What's shocking to us is how fast it's increasing in the last couple of years. The large increase are pretty concerning to us because we don't expect it accelerate so fast. And what bothers us most is that we do not know where is it from for sure. Humans are responsible for much of the methane in the atmosphere through agriculture, fossil fuels and landfills. The rest is emitted by natural sources, including wetlands. Isotopic evidence suggests the recent rapid increase in global methane isn't primarily from fossil fuels, but instead microbes. Another piece of evidence that more and more research recently is showing that um, some satellites or some uh, modeling studies, they pointing to increased emissions from the tropical region, um, particularly from the tropical wetland region. When wetlands get warmer and wetter, they break down organic material faster and release more methane emissions, raising the grim prospect that the earth might be warming itself. So the, the real concern here is that if what is driving this increase in methane emissions from natural tropical wetlands um, is elevated temperatures and increased precipitation due to climate change, this starts to look like what climate scientists call a positive feedback loop, which is actually not positive news at all. It can be climate feedback, and if it is, we are in a very bad situation. Carbon dioxide is a much bigger contributor to global warming than methane. But while CO2 remains in the atmosphere for hundreds to thousands of years, it only takes about a decade for methane to break down, meaning cutting methane emissions has a more immediate effect on temperatures. So you can expect actually to see the impact on atmospheric concentration if you do something about methane, you can reduce the sources of methane pretty quickly. It just kind of increases the imperative to, re to reduce those emissions that we are in control of. So those ones that are very directly linked to human activities. Last year at COP26, more than 100 countries signed up to a global pledge to collectively cut methane emissions by 30% by the end of the decade. Australia was not one of them. Then Energy Minister Angus Taylor said almost half of Australia's annual methane emissions come from the agriculture sector, where the only practical way to reduce emissions would be by culling herd sizes. At the time, the opposition supported not signing the pledge. We need to drive down uh, emissions as much as possible, uh, but uh, it would have been premature uh, for Australia to sign up to that commitment. Now in government, Labor is considering signing the pledge. I certainly formed the understanding, based on the scare campaign that was run and the way it was reported before the election, uh, that the Global Methane Pledge was setting some kind of binding target that was going to require the, the reduction of livestock herds and things like that. That is not the case. The Global Methane Pledge is an aspirational goal. Rather than impose a New Zealand-style tax on farm animals, Australia will develop low-emission feed alternatives. We have got assurances from government 
uh, that, and we'll hold them to those assurances, that agriculture can continue to grow and they will work with us to develop the technology. Straight for another three and a half k, and then we get off the top of the road. Dr Zoe Lowe is one of the leaders of a CSIRO team measuring greenhouse gases from northwest Tasmania and other global sites. She also collects methane observations around urban Melbourne. As we're driving around, we can see a lot of fairly small lumps and bumps and peaks. Some of those might be emissions coming out of the back end of vehicles that are driving along the road. Um, some of them might be small leaks coming out of any of these houses that have gas appliances. Part of the work is observing methane hotspots and taking flask samples to later identify the source of the methane. So there's a range of sources in urban areas that are under human control. Emissions from landfills, from wastewater treatment, leakages from natural gas, the natural gas system. These are all areas that can be mitigated pretty readily. Over this map, we can see that there are a few hot spots around the city of Melbourne. Mm, some really so, significant hot spots. Yeah. And, and then we... Their modelling may help policymakers recognise effective ways to cut emissions that are within easy reach. Cities cover only about 3% of the land surface on Earth, but they're responsible for about 20% of the anthropogenic methane emissions. So we get really good bang for our buck. If we can do really targeted science to help drive smart policies for reducing methane emissions in cities, we get a really big win for climate. <laughs>